this is Judy Berman. I'm about to do a presentation for Art from the Holocaust. And I'm going to share the screen now when I'm recording. Thank you. OK, uh, I'm going to be showing some work now. And I'm going to be starting with a picture of the museum Yad Vashem, which is 45 acres across Jerusalem's Mount of Remembrance. Yad Vashem is the World Center for Holocaust Education, Remembrance, Research, and Documentation. And for over six decades, Yad Vashem has dedicated itself to perpetuating the memory of the Jewish men, women, and children who were murdered by Nazi Germany and its collaborators and to passing on the legacy of the survivors. And I, I was there actually, I visited Yad Vashem and my father is a survivor from the Holocaust. So here we have Felix Nussbaum, the refugee from 1939. And Felix Nussbaum was a German artist of surrealism and was able to depict a, an image from the Holocaust. He did a lot of artwork and um, there's even a uh, museum called the uh, Nussbaum House in Germany. Uh, it, it's it, all in German. He was born in 1904 in Germany and he died in 1944 in Poland. He was a surrealistic painter and his work gives a rare glimpse into the essence of one person among the victims of the Holocaust. And uh, the refugee, this picture, a man sits slumped in a chair, his head buried in his hands in a gesture of utter despair. Next to him, a walking stick and a bundle of his belongings, a long bare table following German occupation of Belgium in May, 1940, Nussbaum was arrested. And this is one of his most haunting paintings. So These are two self-portraits, Joseph Counter, self-portrait from 1941, crayon on uh, watercolor on paper, and Charlotte Solomon, uh, self-portrait, 1939 to 1941, uh, crayon on paper. I have another watercolor by Joseph Counter later in this exhibit. And here's Leo Haas, transport arrival. 1942. And the passage that accompanies this picture is that in Terezin, in order to protect my friends and me from being sent to the gas chamber in Auschwitz, the self-administration put us to work on construction management where we did architectural drawings, partly for real, but largely as a means of camouflage. It was clear that we should not use that, you, we should not only use the material that we, was put at our disposal for that purpose. So we marched around drawing whatever we regarded as notable. And I did it because it was what I felt I should do in all camps, create witness testimony, and to some extent create evidence. I almost never thought I was making art. I just wanted to create pieces for the prosecution. This is how Leo House described his imprisonment during an interview in East Berlin in 1981. He was the only one from a group of artists in the ghetto to survive the war. He was 44 at the time of his liberation, and some of his 500 or so drawings were used as evidence in court. Despite its documentary intention, the washed pen and ink drawing depicting the arrival of a transport is a well-composed work of art. Bare black trees create a baleful trellis along the path like messengers of death. Birds of prey circle over a long, lonely train of people moving through a cold and bleak landscape. Next to the gate of the ghetto in the lower left-hand corner of the picture, Haas drew the letter V as a symbol of his resistance. 
So they didn't have cameras, they didn't have cell phones, they couldn't take videos. And uh, for a long time, a lot of the world didn't know the atrocities that were going on. But as part of the testimony and like uh, used as evidence, like in the Nuremberg trials, uh, this artwork is indeed artwork art by people who were victims in the Holocaust, but also is testimony to the atrocities. Here is Carl Bodick and Kurt Lowe, one spring in 1941. And this is the barbed wire and a butterfly. And the passage with this is the frequent use of fences and barbed wire depicts loneliness and imprisonment, but also a view at the far side of brutal reality. The power of self-assertion, both as a person and artist, as well as the will to survive and hope for the future were not to be suppressed. In the Gers camp in Southern France, Carl Bodek and Kurt Lowe designed postcards they sent from the ghetto to the whole world. Postcards carrying promising messages. In this case, a yellow butterfly sitting high above the dark reality embodies the hope of the coming spring. The barbed wire overarches the view of the mountains on the Spanish border in the background. The chosen perspective makes it clear that art was used in the camps as a way of expressing courage and optimism. Okay, here's another watercolor by Joseph Callender. This is uh, a street in Lodes Ghetto, 1941. And Joseph Callender moved to Lodes with his family as a child. Leo Brewer, Path Between the Barracks, 1941. The passage with this, Leo Brewer lived from 1893 to 1975 in Bonn. Leo Brewer was born to a Catholic mother and a Jewish father. He was conscripted into the German army during World War I and was taken prisoner by the Russians. Upon his return to Germany in 1919, he studied at the art academies of Cologne and Kassel. Brewer exhibited in various exhibits, exhibitions in Germany, painted theater backdrops and taught art. In 1934, he immigrated to The Hague and then moved from there to Brussels, where he continued to paint and exhibit. In May 1940, he was arrested and sent to the St. Cyprian camp in southern France, where he contracted typhus. After his recovery, he was transferred to the Gers camp. There, Brewer was a member of the Catholic Relief Organization and captured scenes of the reality of camp life in drawings. He was released in late 1941 with another 57 prisoners and found refuge at the La Roche Reception Center in Chasse, where political prisoners and Jews were hidden. He lived under, under a false identity until liberation. After the war, he settled in Paris and later in his birthplace, Bonn, where he continued to paint. And next we have Nellie Tall, Girls in the Field, 1943. In the passage with this, is this drawing is the work of an eight-year-old girl and shows two women, maybe a mother and daughter, strolling over a sunny meadow next to a dense forest, both in whom the young artist paid great attention to detail, are happy and dressed in pretty clothes. Nelly Toll lived in Lemberg, which following the German invasion of Poland was occupied by the Russian army under the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. The girl's father hid in order to avoid being deported in, to Siberia. But when Lemberg was taken by German troops in 1941, Nelly, her mother and brother were forced to move to a ghetto. While her brother was carted away and murdered as part of a so-called children action, her father managed to organize a place for his wife and daughter to stay. Nelly and her mother spent two years in a tiny hideaway with a Christian family. During the long hours they spent there, Nellie's mother encouraged her to draw, write stories, and keep a diary. Here is Bedrick Frita, the rear entrance, 1941. 
Bedrick Fritter lived from 1906 to 1944 and passed in the Auschwitz Bergenau camp. Bedrick Frieder was born in 1906 in Visnova, Bohemia, and passed in 1944 in the Auschwitz Birkenau camp. Bedrick Frieder was a graphic designer and cartoonist in Prague. Now I have Pavel Fantel, the song is over 1941 to 1944. Pavel Fantel born in 1903. Pavel Fantel studied medicine and took private art lessons. In 1935, he married and was inducted into the Czechoslovakian army as a medical officer. In 1939, he was dismissed for being a Jew and the family moved to Kolin, Bohemia, where he was conscripted as a forced laborer. In June, 1942, Fantel was transported to the Thiesenstadt ghetto with his mother, Ida, his wife, Maria, and their son, Thomas. He directed the hospital for quarantine type of patients and shared the underground group of Jewish doctors. He used his position to relay information to the outside world, thus arousing the German suspicion. He was imprisoned in the small fortress where he was interrogated and tortured. After being released to his living quarters, he smuggled out about 80 of his sketches. And in, 19, in October 1944, Fantel was deported. And now I also have some websites and it includes an exhibition of Nussbaum and an exhibition from art after the liberation and art from uh, artists during the Holocaust. Here is art from the Holocaust. Felix Nussbaum, the refugee from Brussels. Charlotte Solomon, 1917 to 1943, self-portrait. Nellie Tall, Girls in the Field. Joseph Counter, Street and Loads. Carl Robert and Kurt Conrad Lowe, one Spring in the Gers Camp, Bedrick Frita, 1906-1944, the, the rear entrance, Jacob Lichitz, Beaten, Leo Haas, Transport Arrival, Pavel Fantel, The Song is Over, and Moritz Muller, Rooftops, and Leo Brewer, The Path Between the Barracks, Joseph Kauner's Self-Portrait, and Esther Laurie portrait of a young girl. And there's more in the other website pictures, but I'm going to end the recording now. Thank you.